going on. Um, I apologise. Didn't get to see the first use of the steady rest. Now it's attached, so I've finished the T bolt and everything. Got the steady attached, and I've faced off. Then I thought to myself, hold on, I'm not even recording my first session here. So basically, I've just faced off here. I've got it set up. It's in there. I've set it up down here, and then I've just moved it out there and reclamped it back down again. I lost concentration basically because the lathe keeps on snapping its belt because a bit of oil got in, and leather doesn't like oil. It splits up like that and then rips. And I also made a new. A new bracket for the motor bracket down here and I've put absorbent granules in the you can see there's like, there's like a dam I can't really see in there but there's like a dam welded around the chip pan and that's just where the lathe sits in where it bolts in and that's to keep the oil out of it well unfortunately obviously it leaks oil somewhere else so my covers here which stop a lot of oil going in there Behind the covers, there's inside there, there's lots of granules, and then the dam continues around underneath this. Well, I should be able to show you a little bit without uh, too much hassle. So, this is just a cover that comes off, and then inside there, I've got loads of granules. And I hope that it will all be right. Last night, when I was doing this, and it's the morning now, I uh, Faced it off and tried to take a cut off of this side. I just want to clean it up down here a little bit for welding because I've got to weld a, a slightly bigger section onto this and thread that. It should all be very good fun. <laughs> um, I don't know how this is all going to go. But as you can see, this bit of steel here is very thin walled and it's um, painted. It's from some kind of child's toy or a go kart, I think it is, something like that. My tool last night, I've got a high speed steel tool in there and after it was squealing at 11 o'clock last night I thought I'd best not do that and wake everybody up around the street and uh, I stopped, took the tool out, get a bit of a hone in now you can quit your finger on the end of it, it's quite quite sharp here we go, run, oh I better oil the bearings <laughs> squeals as it was last night Squeezing a little bit still, just put a bit more of a cut on, about 3 thou there. Hopefully that will be good. Oh, has it, it hasn't cleaned up all the way, has it? Oh man, still got a little bit left here. I was hoping that was it. Not to worry, I didn't zero it out. Get some little stringy chips come off. Minute ones. But yeah, that was good. That was very good. Exciting. What chatter.
Okay, one more cut. I could try a different speed, of course, as well. I'll push it too much. I'll well, have to touch off again because I've just balls up me setting. There were some very weird marks there, I think that's the welding is it? Maybe, in the welding. Know, extremely thin weld, I think I'm going to try and bore the centre out now. It should be quite fun, Let's see if we can do that. Have success nearly just got to take another couple of foul out of that unbelievably close wall thickness on this now is minute looks fantastic so this will be the final cut and we'll put some oil in there now clean the end off and I'm gonna put another Fourth out the side, and hopefully that is it. chips out so I can see inside there. <laughs> Got them. Yeah yeah okay. It's extremely thin walled now but it doesn't really take any lateral loads it's just um, tensional loads. 
and there's going to be a, a cone welded on the end of this now. So I'm going to measure the outside diameter of this. I'm going to make a collar which slips over that really tight fit. If it's a really tight fit, I'm going to use Loctite and Loctite it on. If it's a slightly wobbly fit that I make, then I'm going to have to TIG weld it on there, just really low settings, because this wall thickness now is thin. Very thin indeed. I'll try and get some kind of measurement, see if I can just get you in there and show you. You can't really get a representation of how that is. It zeroes out, the gauge does. The only up. No, it doesn't. I'm just wiping the surfaces. But it zeroes out below zero, so we'll zero it out. Uh, we'll get the tool out of the way a little bit. And the wall thickness on that is 18 thou. Just believe me when I say it's thin, that is extremely thin and extremely sharp. So I think I'm just going to take some of those sharp edges off with a bit of emery cloth. So there we go, it looks good. So I'm just trying to see what it's just take the edges off and try not to drop any bits in the lathe. Fingers crossed. Taking that grinding dust off. There we go. With a clean finger for the inside. Be careful. Try and get any of that grit out. Don't want that going on the lathe. Anyway, quite happy with that. Let's get a closer look. So that's what I'm playing with. That and that is the finish. Extending it by that much. So this is one of the collets for the headstock. As you can see the diameter of this was almost identical. That's why I chose it. I don't want to buy anything and keep on taking things to pieces and this is the closest I've had so far. I've got a piece which fits over this but it's really nice I don't want to I don't want to use it all so I've got to use that little bit for threads so I'll use a bit that covers the threads completely and a bit which will come over this here so yeah See what happens like. Steel, right, that's 
up above Sunsa. Yeah, that's bloody noisy, we're not doing that anymore. Put the car boy back in again. Touch off. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's get the light on the subject and I can see what I'm doing. on and that should be finished. I'll take too much off the outside. So put a cut on around about 4,000, 5,000, that's 10,000 total. interrupted a bit more this side is obviously some kind of big wheel effect thing so I want the edge to be square like I've got it square there and I'll bore it out again 
And I put a centre in. And remount the bar. Oh, I can get it all the way in. It's not going to be very good at the end there for holding. I don't know if that's going to have it very well. I've literally just nipped it. It's not going to have it. It's not even worth thinking about having it just that amount. Right there. Cool. Right. Okay. This is going to be good fun getting this paint off. Now the steady rest, clean the ends up, they should be perfect now, so <coughs> I've got the live center in it now. If we want to take all this paint off, it shouldn't chatter so much anymore, I'm going to do it with the hopefully I'm going to do it with the High speed steel, get the words out with the high speed steel, just extending the quill out on the tailstock so I can get this tool bit to go back further. Hopefully, I've got enough travel now. <clears throat> yep. So, right now, I am going to go for a couple way down here. But I don't want is to have to clean my bed up so much after that. So I think I might have a piece of cardboard that travels across with it. Sounds like a plan. So I'm going to try and attach this somehow. So this can catch all the paint. Mm. I want this to catch all the paint. But also I want it to catch all the paint and I want it not to... So I might just hold it with my hand to be fair. To try and catch all the paint. Yeah. This could be fun to watch. Hopefully this will carry on recording. This is an hour video now. There we go. So I'm going for the touch. Giving it a few extra power. In fact, I'm going to, I'm going to engage the gearbox. Bearing some more oil. Let's do it. Run. Take it back a little bit. Try not to catch my arm on the chalk and engage and disengage and engage and interference and engage.
camera is just about to cut out, I'm going to stick some power into it. Yeah, I've not been concentrating, so I've bored this out to 8.32, something like that. Cord diameter is supposed to be 8, something or other. Cord diameter, we're looking for an 8.75, 8.30, 8.30. So I did it 831 or 832 I think I did it for. So I've got 22, 22.2 depth of cut. I don't know how to do that with a DTI or not. I've got one DTI up set for a depth stop. That will come up against the lever here. And when that comes around to five hundredths, that's perfect. Usually when I'm threading I'll set up another one. So we'll try and set up another one. And the gold wing. Oh come on. There we go. So if this magnet will go in here, I don't know if it will or not. Oh it looks promising. Yeah, it'll go in there. Alright. Fair enough, I'll have to mess about with it a little bit. Undo. You have little faith that thought my gold wing was just a stupid idea. <laughs> it probably still is just a stupid idea, but end of the day, it is doing this. Oh, you know what? Before I set my gold wing up, it might be handy if I set up my compound to 55 degrees. Sorry, not 55 degrees. It would have been 29 and a half, but since I'm doing a 60 degree, 60 degree thingamabob, we'll do it for a 60 degree thingamabob. <laughs> 60 degree thing thread. That's the word I'm looking for. 60 degree thread. I have taken the executive decision. I'm not setting the compound up. I'm taking full depth of cut off both sides. So what I did was I've honed this tool bit as best as possible it now cuts how well it cuts and how much tool pressure it's going to develop I do not know but I'm going to try it this is all going to happen properly quick so I am going to first of all since we're coming out I'm going to set a zero in the out position why even bother I don't need to do anything on the compound. I can just leave the compound as it is. As it is, it will be alright. Now I wanted to cut this going away from the chuck. But want isn't going to happen. So I'm going to cut it going towards the chuck. So I might do it in back gear. Just to give myself a chance. <laughs> I can't see me getting this right. This is going to be all over the shop. This is, this is going to be well funny. Especially with the camera right in my way. Uh, well, if it goes wrong, it goes wrong. Yeah. If it goes wrong, it goes wrong. Okay, so let's do a touch off for a start. Let's do some touching off. Wrong. That's a touch. Now that is a zero. For a second because my hand is going to be extremely close as I set up the DTI gauge yeah it would have been catching my knuckles more than likely put some pretension on that 
I'm setting up a DTI as well as the compound. And depth of cut should be 22 thousandths for this thread. So, we have a zero there, you can see that. And we are going to now see, uh, it's not a very nice cutter. Oh, I'll just, I took a shave and then I came out, yeah, that's what happened. So now I'm going to see if I'm set up for 24 TPI. Which I'm not. But we'll do it in a second. That is 24 TPI. So let's give it a blast. See if that cuts 24 TPI. Run. <laughs> gauge you know we had to see this oh, I'm not gonna be able to see this nobody's gonna be able to see this <laughs> I can't make any tails out of that Yeah, that looks like eighty. That's twenty. Looks like twenty-four TPI. Cool. That was a twenty-four TPI. Yeah. Right. So this time I'm going to remember which thing I am on the thread dial. That's the other thing I've got to do. So we'll start out here. Run it up. <laughs> show a little bit of what I'm doing down here. This is all going on. This is epic. So this is the thread dial. As you can see it's turning around. Yeah. This is the half knot lever. And this is the cross slide adjustment. So I've got all the way into my gap at the end. I'm now going to wind the cross slide that way a little bit come out of the cut bring it back to zero put on 5 thou maybe 10 thou it's first cut, 10 thou come on 10 thou so now I'm ready to go, I'm going to look for the one to come round That was it. So we'll wait one hole for rotation, put the come back around. Now we're in. Now we're in for the So what I've done there is I've stopped the gauge on this and zero on that. It was just before I just brought it in. We'll do that again. So now I'm in days to cut. If I wind if I wind out the saddle away now it will just wipe the threads out. So I'm gonna take this past the zero, wind it out clear, bring it back to the zero, 
put on the 10,000, right? The back to zero. Put on the 10,000 I had, and now put on another 5,000. Another 5,000. Wait for the one to come round. That was it. That was the two. That's the one. Perfect. Wind it out. Put it on to five. And again. Back to the zero. Back to the ten I had. Back to the five I had. Now another five, and that should leave me two thousand clean up. And then we'll try it. So we're all ready to go again. A bit more oil, I think. Wait for the one to come round. Stop. I've got um, show why I stopped. I'll bring you in and show you. So the reason why I stopped is because I got swarf. I want to be recutting swarf. I don't want to be recutting swarf. That's why I stopped. So we'll start again. You can be here this time and watch it go in. So the tool press should take effect on the bar and everything. Ten up on for start. That five. That five I'll just put on. I'm gonna recut that again. With an extra foul on it. So I'm recutting it with an extra foul. Little really juices. Put some extra oil in. Gauge on number one. What's happened is it's been half not got locked in. Oh man, that's uh, me half not got locked in. Good grief, me half not got locked in. Yeah, that made some uh, impression in there. Well, I hope that's cut all right, because... 
it's working nice and free now and the half nut got locked in. That was not handy. That was a bit, uh, <laughs> that, was, that was like, what the, what's happened here? All it's done is cut me land further back and then stalled the lathe. Okay, so that's not too bad. It doesn't look great at the back, but the threads are all right. So, hopefully. Everything's going to be tickety-boo in there. Only problem is, I don't have a compressor in it. So... Pump me, pump up. Run it up. Toothbrush or something to clean these out with. Hmm, old toothbrush. I've got a new toothbrush, but I haven't got an old one. Anyway, let's try it. Let's see if it's approximately there because I think we've just ballsed it all up. Hopefully, that was right. Starts. That's that's a uh, good good sign. No, I think I start properly. Still some, I mean, me lathe cuts a small taper, so the threads are loose at the start now and really tight at the end. So just one more thousandth, and I think I'll get screwed in and off. That'd be perfect. Too loose at the tight, too too tight, too loose at the start, and too tight at the end. That's all the way home. That is the uh, yeah. It feels great actually. <laughs> it's just gone from feeling tight as it gets halfway in to feeling absolutely beautiful all the way down. To be fair, yeah. So there we go. Not that much slack there. It's really towards the end now. Yeah, they feel good even at the end there. They feel good. Oh, there's only about two threads in there now. Got right, one thread in there, and I'll just drop the collet. Oh dear. 
all the excitement of internal threading. <laughs> okay, so that part is finished. Is the bit is there a burr on it? Probably. So I might want to cut a bit more of a lead in now. Let's get rid of these DTI gauges. Just pause you for a second. Yeah, I was going to put the chamfer in the 45 in there, but I'm thinking to myself, well, it's okay. I'm just going to give it some sanding to make it look a bit more pretty, and that will do. Yeah, do some sanding, that'll do.